All right, engineers, join us in this four-part series where we're going to talk about descending tracks. We're going to talk about four individual ones. Okay, so four separate videos. The first video, the one we're going to talk about in this one, is going to be the vestibulospinal tract. So we're going to talk about that one in this video. The next video, we're going to talk about the ponto reticulospinal tract. Then we'll talk about the rubrospinal tract. And then finally, we'll finish off with the medullary reticulospinal tract. So let's go ahead and start first on the vestibulospinal tract. All right, so let's go ahead and start on the vestibulospinal tract. So if you guys haven't already uh, watched the vestibular cochlear nerve, the vestibular pathway, we actually talked about this track in pretty good detail in that. So if you haven't, go watch that too. But anyway, we're gonna cover it uh, again because repetition is always good, all right? So the vestibulospinal tract, Here's the big thing that I want to get out of all these videos. I want you guys to remember the ultimate termination or destination or function of this track. This track, this vestibulospinal track, is mainly going to activate extensor muscles. Extensor muscles. But to even be a little bit more specific, this vestibulospinal tract is also important for anti-gravity muscles, posture muscles, and we'll explain why. But I want you to remember that it's primarily for extensor muscles, but we can cl classify this as our anti-gravity anti -gravity muscles. Helps to maintain our posture and, and balance, right? So anti-gravity muscles, okay? now. Why is this? Well, there, there's a special set of nuclei. This is your vestibular nuclear complex. Your vestibular nuclear complex is located within the medulla, right, the upper part of the medulla. So this is our vestibular nuclear complex, and this is our vestibular nuclear complex. You have a right one and a left one, right? So here's the right side, here's the left side. Now, where do these nuclei get stimuli from? They get it from two different stimuli. So what is the stimulus? Well, it comes from two different stimuli. One is in the inner ear. You know in the inner ear you have the macula, and the macula, if you remember, that was located in the utricle and in the saccule. They respond to linear acceleration. But another one was actually going to be within the semicircular duct, specifically in the ampulla of the semicircular duct. They called it the cristae ampullaris. If you remember, these two structures gave what? They gave that vestibular branch of the vestibular cochlear nerve. And that vestibular branch of the vestibular cochlear nerve came and ended up on this vestibular nuclear complex. All right? Now, what did it do from that point? Remember there's the vestibular nuclear complex has the superior, the inferior, the medial, and the lateral vestibular nucleus. Why am I telling you this? The reason why is the lateral vestibular nucleus and the medial vestibular nucleus are the main components of this vestibulospinal tract. All right, so the medial and the lateral are the main components of the vestibulospinal tract. Now there's two different stimulations we said. One is coming from the inner ear, right? From the macula, which is detecting linear acceleration. So pretend you're in a, you're in a vehicle and you just hit the, hit the gas or you hit the brakes really fast, either one. The, the, they're shifting within the inner ear, which helps to send that information to the vestibular nuclear complex. Another one is if you're, you're actually rotational or angularly accelerating that activates the cristambularis and tells the vestibular nuclear complex of that. There's another situation. You know in the cerebellum, here's the cerebellum right here, there's uh, different types of nuclei in here. You know, uh, there's a special nucleus and it's called the vestigial nucleus. And the vestigial nucleus can actually send information out to this vestibular nuclear complex and tell this vestibular nuclear complex about what the cerebellum knows about its proprioception. So you know proprioception is basically the position of your muscles, your tendons, your joints, your ligaments. Our cerebellum has constant awareness of where our limbs and our body is in space. So the cerebellum has a way of telling these vestibular nuclei, hey, I know where the arm is. I know where the legs are. So here, take this information so that whenever you have these movements, these descending fibers coming down, you tell the muscles exactly how they should contract in the exact direction, the exact way that they should do it. It's a beautiful system. So two different stimuli. One is coming from the vestigial nucleus within the cerebellum. 
and the other one is coming from the inner ear structure, specifically the macula and the cristampularis. Now, once they get their stimulus, like I told you, the lateral and the medial are the ones that are uh, actually primarily forming the vestibular spinal tract. But even more, I want you to remember, is most of the fibers are coming from the lateral. The reason why is the lateral is controlling uh, specific types of musculature, right? So the medial controls more of your head and neck musculature, right? Being able to maintain the movement of our head and our posture whenever we're actually rotating, accelerating, right, in the rotational direction or linearly accelerating. We want to be able to maintain our actual muscle tone within the head and neck muscles. The lateral vestibular spinal tract is controlling more of the actual uh, limb and even trunk extension. All right, so that's why it's important. So now, let's bring these guys down now. Okay, so they're gonna come down, these fibers, these, this actual vestibular spinal tract. When they come down, they're gonna go into the actual, into the spinal cord. Now, as they go down through the spinal cord, they're going to give stimulation ipsilaterally, ipsilaterally to the actual cell bodies of the actual alpha and gamma motor neurons located within the anterior or ventral gray horn. So let's say that here I have these cell bodies right here, right? And let's say, pretend that these are my alpha motor neurons. And then right adjacent to it, what will I have? Maybe I'll have some gamma motor neurons. So over here I'll have some gamma motor neurons. What will these guys do? From here, these alpha motor neurons are gonna come out and go to specific types of muscles. What muscles will they be going to? We said that they're going to extensor muscles or anti-gravity muscles, right? Or muscles that help to maintain our posture and our balance when we're linearly or rotating, uh, accelerating in a rotational direction. Now. We said, if it's the medial, let's pretend that these are for the medial, let's just say, these are for the medial vestibular spinal tract. If this is for the medial vestibular spinal tract, vestibular spinal tract, if this is for the medial vestibular spinal tract, this will only be going to what type of muscles? You have to remember this. This is for the head and neck muscles, all right? This is for the medial vestibular spinal tract, head and neck muscles. So let's pretend that this is like the cervical section of the spinal cord, okay? Pretend for a second that this right here is the cervical section. This is the cervical section of the spinal cord, right? So it's gonna be going to the head and neck muscles. Now, let's say that we keep following these down. So let's say that we keep following these guys down and let's presume that now this is gonna be the lateral vestibular spinal tract, right? So now the lateral vestibular spinal tract is gonna come over here and go ipsilaterally onto some alpha and gamma motor neurons that are located within the anterior gray horn of the spinal cord. And what will they do? They'll come out and stimulate these actual muscles. If you guys haven't already watched the corticospinal video, you guys will remember, remember that the gamma is specifically for the muscle spindles right, to maintain the, the actual tightness of the muscle spindles. The alpha is for the extrafusal muscle fibers, the muscle fibers that actually contract and shorten and lengthen the muscle, all right? Now, if it is the lateral, if it is the lateral vestibulospinal tract, the lateral vestibulospinal tract, what type of muscles will this be going to? This will be going to more of the axial and the appendicular and appendicular extensors. Okay, so it's going to be going into some of the axial and the appendicular extensors. If you think about it, we want to have these muscles contracting, right, to be able to maintain our posture and our balance and the, to resist gravity. But here's the important thing. There has to be some way that we could put a break on this system. This system has to constantly, whenever it's not necessarily needs to be stimulated, Whenever it doesn't need to be stimulated, we need to have some break on it, a way that we can control it. Let me get my red marker here. There's a special nucleus located within the midbrain. And this nucleus is called the red nucleus, right? It's called the red nucleus. The red nucleus can come down here and inhibit 
the vestibular nuclear complex and prevent these actual vestibular spinal tracts from going down. Why? To prevent excessive contraction of the extensors. If this, this is actually going to be coming from, again, what nucleus? The red nuclei here. If these guys aren't sending these inhibitory pathways down to the vestibular nuclei, you know what could happen? It could cause what's called extensor hypertonus, where the extensor muscles are so crazily contracted, more than they need to be. So to prevent that from happening, we have a brake system here, and that's this red nucleus. Okay, they can give inhibitory descending fibers to inhibit these vestibular nuclei from continuously stimulating the actual vestibular spinal tract via the medial and the lateral. And there's another way. Remember I told you that whenever you're rotating linearly, um, or if you're doing linear acceleration or angular acceleration, you have to move your head and neck, you have to maintain posture and balance, right? But what else do you do? You move your eyes. There's another one, we're not going to talk about it, but remember that the vestibular nucleus can also send fibers upwards to control eye movement via the third nerve, the fourth cranial nerve, and the sixth cranial nerve. If you remember, that was called the medial longitudinal fasciculus, okay? So, basic thing that I want you guys to get out of this is the vestibular spinal tract, it controls your extensor muscles or your anti-gravity muscles to maintain posture and balance during linear and angular acceleration. What are the two stimuli? The inner ear structures, macula crista ampullaris, and it gets some modification from the vestigial nucleus within the cerebellum. What's its ultimate goal? To send down via medial and lateral vestibular spinal tracts into the spinal cord. If it's going to the cervical region, it's going to be the medial supplying the head and neck muscles. And if it's going to more axial and more of the appendicular skeleton, what is it going to be supplying? It's then going to be supplying, uh, it's going to be supplied by the lateral vestibular spinal tract. And then remember, we have to have a brake system on this tract, which is going to be coming from the red nucleus. All right, engineers, so we covered the vestibular spinal tract. Now, in the next video, we're going to go and talk about the ponto-reticulospinal tract. I'll see you guys there.